God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Hi, I'm Gabby. Welcome to another Bethel Baptist Sunday School Youth Session. Thank you for joining us today and have a great week. Let's go! God, thank you for giving us another day to help praise your name. Uh, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us on a day-to-day -day basis. We thank you for waking us up in the morning. Give us another chance at life on this beautiful world. Uh, we also thank you for giving us another chance to do Sunday school. I know usually we be inside the church on Sundays. and But now, during these difficult times, we're only able to do it virtually. But we also thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 
to be married to Joseph. God chose her to be the mother of his son Jesus. The baby Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem and Angel appeared to Joseph one night while he was sleeping and told him to marry Mary and to name the baby Jesus. Some wise men found out that Jesus had been born and went searching for him. They looked for a star in the sky and it led them to a place where Jesus was. When the wise men found where Jesus was, they were sending him with special gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they Worship him. All right, guys. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and enjoy the holidays. Today's scripture will be coming from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod Magi. Magi, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But when Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the ruler of Judah, for out, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Wow, guys, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? Let's get into our lesson. 
The story of the Magi, or wise men, showed us the first time that people came to worship Jesus. And at that time, he was just a baby. We don't exactly know how many wise men came, though sometimes we think of three because of the three gifts that they brought. These men were learned astronomers or astrologers from somewhere in the east, maybe Persia or Syria. They studied the skies and the stars and believed that the stars told stories that followed prophecies of things to come. They saw a significant star and followed it to determine what it meant. This, of course, led them to an area where King Herod was, and he was not happy to hear of another king being born. Jesus' birth had been predicted many years before by the prophets in the Old Testament. Micah specifically mentions that the place where Jesus would arrive. The Magi were ready to follow that, but Herod was still quite worried. He asked for the Magi to lead him to worship Jesus, but actually wanted to remove any potential threat that a new king would pose. Meanwhile, the wise men went on to Bethlehem and found Jesus. The Magi brought gold, which was obviously worth something, and also demonstrated that Jesus would be king. The myrrh was likely a practical gift as an ointment, but was also an embalming material. It likely showed the kind of death and sacrifice that Jesus would have. Frankincense was used in worship and giving to Christ because he was God. After the Magi found Christ's child, they were full of joy and satisfaction. A dream warned them not to go back to hear it, but instead to avoid his requests and dangers. Mary and Joseph too. They were going to get out of town and they escaped barely in time going to Egypt. This has got to be one of the most special moments in a Christmas story. It reminds us that God gave us his most precious gift on that first Christmas day when Jesus was born. And the gifts of the wise men remind us that he gave gifts to Jesus like the wise men did so long ago. What can we give? We can give him our thanks, our praise, our worship, and also our obedience and service. Think about that. today um well if you call sitting in front of an open screen for hours then closing the screen then walking into the kitchen being done then yes I am done today was pretty easy most of the teachers talked about how next semester is going to be and reminded us to check our grades and you know stuff like that not still not the same as being in school on the last day before Christmas break though I can't imagine it would be Nothing about this year has been the same as before. Has given real meaning to the saying, everything changes and nothing stays the same. Hmm. Hey mom, you remember last year when we fed the homeless? Yes, yes I do. I enjoy being able to fill someone else's belly besides yours. <laughs> Ha ha ha, I'm trying to be serious here, Mom. <clears throat> well, oh my bad. Okay, 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 okay. Go ahead, finish what you're saying. Well, thank you. As I was trying to say, do you remember the man who sat on the bench near where we were giving the food out? 
The one who everyone kept trying to convince to get in line for food? Yes, I do actually. He was the one who you decided to take a plate to and then you were talking until we finished cleaning up and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. I also remember you talking about him the entire way home. So why are you asking me about remembering him? Well, something he said came to me the other day and, uh, well, uh, well, well, what? Well, what did he say? He said there will be a time soon when the world will stop. Churches will close. Schools will close. There will be much death. Several things that were done in the dark will be brought to light. But families will become closer. Churches will reach more people than there were members attending. And then he said something that seemed real and unreal at the same time. But... But what? You have me over here imagining an apocalyptic world and then you stop. As unrealistic as this would have seemed last year, this is exactly what we're in the midst of today. So what else did he say? You know what? You're right. Back then it was unbelievable, but not so much now. He said that angels would show themselves, would reveal themselves and do what they do best work hard to protect God's people. Hmm. This is definitely a time where it would be great to see an angel. I know I'd love to see one. <sighs> the world is in need of a physical manifestation and reassurance through sight that we have someone on our side looking after us. I agree, Mom. Especially those who have been affected by police brutality and are fighting in the Black Lives Matter movement. If only we had angels to visit us like they did way back then, in the old days. In the Bible, angels just seemed to pop up whenever they were needed. Hmm. Yeah. Is that your stomach out here growling? I do wonder what happened to that old guy, though. I don't see him around during the week like all the others. <sighs> now, let me get back to this food. Please do, because I would prefer not to have another blackened meal this week. Oh, so you got jokes now. <laughs> I am definitely not the only one who makes blackened a regular part of the menu around here. <laughs> Excuse me. Absolutely nothing you should be proud of. But anywho, I'm going to put away all my school stuff. Call me when the food is ready. I may also take me a quick nap. All right, dear. See you in a while. Enjoy your nap. friend is okay. With all that's going on right now, life can be a bit much and unpredictable. Ugh. Lord, everything is just so messed up. I don't even want to think about it anymore. Let me just go take my nap. Hey kids, do you ask a lot of questions? I know I used to when I was younger, but have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart? 
If you haven't, here are three simple steps. One, acknowledge that you are a sinner. It's okay, you're not alone. Two, believe that Jesus died so your sins could be forgiven. Three, confess. Confess your sins to God with a prayer like this. Father in heaven, I know that I have sinned and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart today and help me to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you and share how you can begin your relationship with Christ. Until next time, be safe and know that God loves you. Here we are at the end of another year, and wow, what a year 2020 has been. Who would have thought March would be the last time that we could all gather together safely and find ourselves glad to be in the service one more time? I miss going to Bible class. I miss hanging out with my friends. I miss singing in the choir. I miss Miss Dio's yummy food. Virtual school? Huh, my goodness. Don't even get me started. It really makes me sad to think about people that have lost their jobs. And lost loved ones. Lost hope. It makes me really mad when I think about injustice and unfair treatment. But maybe through it all, God is teaching us we don't need a building to be a church. Maybe 2020 is teaching us how much we need the Lord. And how much we need each other. We have to work together to fight for what is right. We have to work together to stay safe, to slow the spread of the virus. Times are hard. We're all tired. But we know this is temporary. In the meantime, we just have to keep doing what we need to do to protect each other. Like washing our hands. Like wearing masks. And staying six feet apart when we're surrounded by people who don't live with us. And of course, we need to keep praying. Even though we're being careful. We will also be courageous. We won't live in 
fear. We will live in love. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift that any Christmas has ever seen. And in Christ, we are one. In Christ, we are better together. Even when we must be apart. In Christ, we believe a better day is coming. And the hope of Christmas shines just as brightly now as it did almost 2,000 years ago. With all the love, peace, peace. and joy that the Lord brings. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Tune in each week for another episode. We miss you all and would love to hear from you. Email us at ourfuture at BethelCollegeville.org or call the church office at 205-322-5360. Until next time, remember God loves you and this is Bethel where hope lives. <laughs>